Let's look at section 6.2, properties of sets. So this section kind of builds on what we saw in section 6.1 about um, various aspects of sets, including set operations and writing proofs associated with sets. So we begin with some subset relations. And if you think about how, what intersection and union mean, um, these make a lot of sense. Um, and they're useful to keep in mind as you're writing proofs. So for all sets A and B, first one says the intersection of A and B is a subset of A. Okay, and that makes sense if you think about what an intersection is. The intersection of A and B consists of all the elements that A and B have in common. So if they're elements that A and B have in common, they must be elements of A. So that makes that intersection a subset of A. Likewise, that intersection is a subset of B. Okay, so that can be uh, useful as you're going through and writing a proof about sets. Um, now, similarly, we can say that A is a subset of the union of A and B. So remember, the union of A and B consists of all the elements from both A and B. They don't have to be elements they have in common, um, but that union consists of all the elements that are in A or B. Okay, so anything that's in A must be in that union. So A is a subset of the union. Likewise, B is a subset of the union. And the last one we have here is that if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. Okay, so remember, for A to be a subset of B, that means every element of A is an element of B. And if every element of B is an element of C, then every element of A must be an element of C. Okay, so that's the transitivity property. Another useful set of properties that's given in this set um, sort of equivalences that we're given. Go back to these definitions of the set operations. So if A and B are subsets of whatever we're, the universal set happens to be, uh, and X and Y we'll use as variables to represent elements of that universal set, then X is an element of the union if and only if X is in A or X is in B. We already saw that in the previous video when we were looking at those set roster definitions for union, intersection, etc. Okay, so now we're writing it as an if and only if. So that's really useful when writing proofs because it lets us interchange if we know that X is an element of union and it's more convenient to write it as X is in A or X is in B. We can do that. Um, along similar lines, if X is an element of the intersection, or X is an element of the intersection, if and only if X is an element of A, and X is an element of B. Actually, an element of B minus A, that set difference, if and only if X is in B and X is in not in A. So again, these are all things that we saw in the previous video as part of that set roster, or uh, excuse me, set builder notation. We have X is an element of the complement of A, if and only if X is not an element of A. And finally, the ordered pair XY is an element of the Cartesian product, A times B, if and only if X is an element of A and Y is an element of B. Okay, remember Cartesian product is something we talked about back in chapter one. Now, one other 
a thing that's discussed in this section is the element method of proof for proving a set equals the empty set. So you're going to see some examples in 6.2 that look different from things you saw in 6.1 in that they're asking us to prove a set is empty. And the way to do that is as follows. We, we do this with a proof by contradiction. So we suppose A contains an element X, and we show that that would lead to a contradiction. Okay, so there's going to be something about the definition of A that as soon as you suppose it has an element, you're going to be able to find a contradiction, um, you know, based on whatever the definition of A is. Okay, and that's going to, of course, depend on the example. Um, you know, so maybe you have a set that's defined based on set operations of other sets. And as soon as you assume there's an element there, that's going to somehow um, lead to a contradiction. And we know that, you know, with proof by contradiction, once you have that contradiction, that shows you that what you suppose to begin with, in this case, supposing A has an element, was not the case. So if A doesn't have an element, then it's empty. Okay, so that's, that's how those go. There are some other things in this section, um, some set identities, uh, and those can be found on page um, 267. Almost the whole page is filled up with set identities. And those are some other things. For example, they have De Morgan's Laws um, now in the context of sets. Uh, where originally we saw De Morgan's Laws and we were doing truth tables um, and the logical connectives and a variety of other set identities uh, here on that page 267. So those are, are uh, useful to have a look at, again, as you're going through the exercises, um, writing proofs and so forth. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, we'll be moving into Chapter 7 next. Um, it doesn't totally put aside the concept of sets because whenever we talk about functions, which is the focus of chapter seven, um, the concept of functions, remember the way we define it is based on sets. So the next uh, section we look at is about functions defined on general sets. Okay, hope you found this helpful. See you in the next video.